the thing to understand about this US travel ban, which doesn't apply to the United Kingdom currently, and of course we're in a situation of high flux, high change, is what we need to ask ourselves is, if and likely when countries do stop, start banning travel for people from the UK or everywhere. I mean, th this is, the US isn't the first. Israel has said anyone coming, including from the UK, must be able to self-isolate for two weeks on arrival, not in a hotel. So if which, you had a two-week holiday book... you had a ten-day holiday book, yeah, yeah. you can't do that, so you can't go. The US is showing a propensity to ban foreign travellers. We're going to see that propensity increase, I suspect, around the world as people move into the delay phase, as we do here. Travel is going to start being restricted. So the key question is, am I covered? And the basic answer is no. It doesn't matter if the President of the United States says you so, can't come. So we check which, the, it, which he may do. We check the Israel time. situation with eight travel insurers, which is a good indication of what the situation is. Three said they would consider covering on a case-by-case -case basis. Five said they wouldn't cover. The reason being, as I said last week, the trigger for travel insurance is does the Foreign and Commonwealth Office advise you not to travel? That is the trigger on most policies for cover. Well, for Israel, let's take Israel, because the United States, you can still travel, and I don't want to confuse anyone, but there may be a case in the future mm. where you can't. But for Israel, you, it doesn't say you can't travel there, and therefore your travel insurance wouldn't cover you. Would they... Uh, Some are saying it is a regulatory authority, so you'd be covered. That's why three are considering it, but five wouldn't would they, consider would it. Would they turn around, would the Foreign Office turn around eventually and say, we understand that this leaves a lot of people without coverage of their assurance, so we'll put Israel on the list and then you can claim insurance? Well, that's what I would ask them to do, but currently their advice is about advice of whether it's safe to travel or not, and that's what that Foreign <laughs> Office page does. It does not say whether your travel insurance will claim. That's just how the mm. industry chooses to interpret it. Now, we need to add to that to the fact that Liverpool Victoria, as it used to be called LV, stopped selling travel insurance. It said you can't get new policies last night. Now, we've been on this for a while. We have seen quite a few over the last week, since I was on here talking travel insurance last week, mm. saying get your travel insurance ASAB as soon as you book. And if you haven't got it, get it ASAP. We've seen travel insurers starting to reduce what they'll cover. So the key travel disruption cover, which is where it would more likely to cover you for these type of events or more likely to cover you if your flight were cancelled but it wasn't in a foreign office band area, you could get your hotel back. Some of them are restricting that. And this makes sense. There is insurance is about covering the unexpected and there is a growing foreseeability that this is expected so they don't want to give you the travel insurance cover. If you've got a holiday booked, get your travel cover now. One more big tip, just, just really important in that we're doing a lot of thinking on this, on travel. Everybody now, if you've got travel booked, find out what your cancellation rights are. When's the last time if you've got free cancellation you can cancel? Put it in your diary in a big red mark so that you know whether you're going to be able to call up. If you can cancel for free and it looks like you won't be able to travel, on the last day, cancel for free. If you can't cancel for free and you will lose all your money, don't cancel then leave it, and if you can't go, hope that by that time the Foreign Office has said you can't go, so your travel insurance will be impacted. You see the, the division of strategy. Now, and, and the travel industry, it's, this is horrendous for, but I, I, got, I got some complaints last week when I talked about when it's right or not wrong to book from people in the travel industry. It's horrendous, but my job is consumer information, and I have to think on that basis. Is there... We've seen Fly B go under. Yeah. Uh, it had underlying issues anyway, but this didn't help. Is there any other airlines that people will be looking at thinking or sort of travel ways of travelling that, that would make people nervous now? Well, I think any, anything with wings is under financial threat. I mean, let, let's not beat around the bush here. That's why there, the, no, there's voluntary time off, unpaid leave going on, rejection in numbers of flights, travel industry was already struggling. This, this, is, this is a real impact. Mm. It sort of brings us on to the next subject, which is the budget. Mm. Let, let's be in no uncertain terms. The, the, the Chancellor, in, in Chancellor speak, although I actually thought he was pretty plain speaking yesterday, talked about supply and demand side challenges. If one, one in five of the workforce is off work, either self-isolating or sick, people aren't going into shops or restaurants, spending money, going out to work, have less money. Mm. I mean, that will be a short, sharp shot for our economy, whether it's technically a recession, because you need two quarters of successive yeah. negative growth, 
or not, we will certainly see quite a substantial short-term downturn, which is why yesterday was the most unprecedented stimulus we've seen, not just by the budget of £30 billion mm -hmm. changing sick pay rules, though still, for most people, living on 94 quid a week or 72 quid a week if you're on employment support allowance. If you're normally on 400 quid, your bills are predicated towards that, not to, it's going to be a struggle. Mm. But we saw money being pumped in, even helicopter money, which is money dropped from the sky, the £3,000 grants to businesses, in a way we've never seen before. You couple that with the interest rate cut, half a percent off interest rates, limboing at the lowest rate in 200 years, and this boost to the economy is something we haven't seen before, and we have to cross our fingers it works. On interest rates, mortgages, variable and tracker rates, they're going to get cheaper by about £30 a month. That'll factor in. If you're looking to remortgage, a couple of weeks will be a very good time. Savers, it's an absolute blooming nightmare for. Mm -hmm. One thing I would say, just another tip, I know I'm going off and you're looking at me, we haven't got time, but this is important. If you've got savings now, when they launch fixed rate savings, where you can lock your money in for a year, they launch them in tranches. What that means, something like they say, Let's get 10 million quid in and then we'll launch a new one. Well, there's a couple of the ones from yesterday still around that have decent rates that haven't sold out their 10 million quid yet. If you can lock your money in one of those now before the rates drop, you might just beat the cusp of this.